All right, Shane, Ch uh, Shane Chittam. Shane, how is it going down there in Tennessee, man? It's going good. We're trying to make the best of this uh, COVID environment and all the things going on, you know, as the wrestling community always does. I think we're just trying to a way to keep training and do the best we can. Okay, so we've got the National Middle School Duels coming up here in uh, Perrysburg, Ohio. They actually had to move the location. Um, you guys will be here. Uh, it is a 13th weigh-in, right? 13, 14, 15? That's right. Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. 13, 14, 15. Team Minions won it two or three years ago. you got to remind me. I think we won it in 17. So three years ago. And yeah, we've been to this. This will be our sixth year going. Um, we've been – I think we've placed a couple times third – and uh, and and then we won it one year in 2017, and the other years, you know, we were kind of low at the bottom. Cody was on that team when you won it in 17, right? That's right, he was. Yeah, that was the squad, man. You guys had a really good yeah. team that year. It was awesome to watch. Yeah, that was the year of cautions for Cody. He Is cautioned out in two. Yeah, he lost. <laughs> he lost a couple of matches, and it was like he shouldn't he have lost. Did. He did. He, like, cautioned out to Bazakis and he cautioned out to Gavin Brown. It was funny. How crazy is that? Think about – now, I want you to just think about the competition you just said. That was at the – that's at the event we're talking about. The National Middle School goes, your kid wrestled oh. Bazakis and he wrestled Gavin Brown. How crazy is that competition? And, and, you know, like, so you put together this team. And Minions is Georgia, Tennessee. It's kind of a mix of, of yeah. states, right? Yeah, uh, Tennessee's kind of caught onto the coattails. It's really um, – you know, it, it was put together – I think 14 years ago, and it's always been just designed around Georgia. But as Tennessee started to get our stuff together, you know, they don't we don't have as big as numbers, but we we train with those guys a lot. We're pretty competitive. And um, several years ago, probably about three or four years ago, we put a partnership together, and we just said it's really going to be Tennessee and Georgia kids, and um, we pack them in two to three teams, so we're able to shuffle and get a little bit of get a little bit of a uh, lineup for everybody. Yeah, and I was just so impressed with that team that won it. But you get there, even a year where you're not going to win it, you're still going there, and you guys are competing hard. What do you like about this event, the National Middle School Duels, and, and what do you think Team Minions really gets out of it and kids from Georgia, kids from the South, Tennessee? What are they getting out of this event when you come up uh, to the Toledo area in Ohio? You know, I look at all the major duels, this, the VAC, McDonough, and Wildwood, and I think Ohio's the hardest. And I think a lot of the teams will tell you it's the best one. I mean, the first thing is – with the, limit, the limited amount of teams that's there, everybody's really juiced up at the beginning of the season. The timing's perfect. The location is really easy to get into if you're coming from out of state, whether you're driving or you're flying. There's multiple airports within, within really good driving distance. And I think the, the overall format, the atmosphere is really nice. I mean, it, it's, it's odd to say this, but, I mean, you can see everything from, from any place in there. Um, you know, it's usually, I know this year is a really odd year, but it's usually connected to the hotel. So it kind of makes it a family environment without a lot of stress and the parents going and going to different places. You can eat, hang out there, watch it. And, um, and, and I don't know why, but every year that particularly, if you can get yourself in the gold pool, that, 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 that gold pool and that silver pool competition is phenomenal. I took a team, I've been five years now, it's my fifth year going. And um, I took a team in 2018, and I had my little nephew on it. It was his first tournament he's ever went to in his life, so not appropriate for him. I think he went oh and whatever. But I had multiple kids. We made I was I was coaching the, our second team, and I had multiple kids that had placed in Tulsa. I had one kid on my team had placed third in Tulsa. He was in the silver pool, and he had a losing bracket. That's crazy. He had a losing record. He had a losing record. Sorry, losing record. He had a losing record. And my whole team had a losing record. We got annihilated. So, you know, it's just like it's everybody's coming in there to really fit. And 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 I think it's also one of those tournaments because it's in a hotbed. You know, it's in Ohio, and you've got Michigan right around the corner. It's good driving distance for the other PA teams. You, some of the guys don't travel and they stay in your local area and you don't get to see them. And and at that and at that tournament, you get to see them all. I talked to uh, old man Ferrari last year and he was talking about, you know, cause they come up from Texas and he's like, I had to get up here and see what was going on here. He goes, my kids aren't usually going to tournaments and losing multiple times He goes, I had to see what they were doing up here. It was like, eh, you know, and it's like, you talk about Cody. Um, 
Cody Chittum is one of the only guys I've ever seen that like beats himself with like weird little things like you're saying. Like that he's a freak. He's your kid. But like just like and he's losing to really good guys off of caution points, off of stalling points. His Iron Man last year was like a head scratcher, right? Then he comes out and goes yeah. out there and I think he won the beast then, didn't he? Like it just it's crazy to look at the competition levels and the and the, the kids who've wrestled at the tournament. It's a who's who, Shane, right? It is. It is. And it's and it's definitely designed around elite level elite level uh competitors. Okay, so M two, uh David Taylor t- threw his uh hat in the ring there last year and he brought a team and you know they competed, took some losses, took some lumps, but you know, central Pennsylvania, right? Western Pennsylvania, eastern Pennsylvania. It's PA, right? You know what you're getting. But you look at what they're starting to draw. You know, you've been in it. You've, you've had your, you know, your toes in the water for, for, you know, since the infancy of the event, right? The National Middle School Duels, it's going to keep to drawing people, right? What's it like when you see these California teams start to come in? And then you got M2 coming in. And then you got teams from Texas coming in. Jersey's always bringing, obviously, they won it last year. But what's it like when you see, you know, Pinnacle from Minnesota? What's it like to see it from its infancy to what it's become? Uh, now, Shane, you know, uh, there's a couple things. I, I, I one of the things I didn't add, I should add, is I love the format that is kind of K through eight because when you go to some of these other big duels, um, I think they're more designed around money making and and, and 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 associated with that, you get a lot of volume of teams and they split up the elementary. And when you get in those lightweights and those middleweights, you know, you might find a guy who's a really good hammer when he's 10 years old, but anybody weighs eight, 75, 80 pounds. He's wrestling guys that are a couple years old them that, you know, have as much strength. So I think it really just kind of uh, puts you in a situation where, you know, there's nowhere to hide and there's nowhere to age group out of it. And, and, you know, since I've been coming to this each year, I feel like the competition gets harder. There's more momentum. Everybody knows it. I mean, I remember going back in 17 and even 16 and there wasn't a team from California there. There weren't many teams coming from the West coast. And then each year, those teams are starting to come. We only had one Pennsylvania team back then. I think everybody was sort of sniffing it out. Um, um, but now it's the, you know, it, it really is the beginning of the wrestling season. And it's the who's who, it's the who's who um, teams. And, you know, they're stacking the decks. And, that, and that's what you want. You know, you're uh, one of those wrestling dads who's got a kid who's going to be one of the top recruits in the country. Your kid could be one of the top two or three recruits in the country. Um, and, and, and taking him to all this stuff as a kid, you know, you're talking Tulsa, you're talking Reno, you're talking about all the USA wrestling events, preseason nationals, right? You know, Cody Chittum's been to every event there is, right? I mean, you guys have gone coast to coast. You're looking for the best competition. Um, what's it like to see when you take him to events like this and he really learns a good lesson about losing on cautions to Bazakas, losing on cautions? Yeah. You know, to the guys he's losing to. I mean, we're talking about these guys are they're mutants in their own right. Yeah. yeah. And he's losing tough matches on, you know, like mental letters per se, right? Like false starts off the bottom, right? Just things like what Cody Chittum has really learned from what he learned from Iron Man last year. But you, you go around here, Shane, being one of the top, you know, your kids one of the top kids in the country, he's gonna be sought after. What's it like to to, to have kids learn lessons at things like this? You know, nothing's been easy for Cody. I mean, I remember I always – actually, I just got done with practice tonight, and I was telling the kids after practice, I mean, he, he was 0-6 at Super 32 in elementary in his first year of middle school. I mean, so the one thing I love about this tournament specifically is there is just a pace. And, you know, you can all – every day I can get in a car, and every day I can get in the basement, not a wrestling man, try to tell his kid he's got to get a certain level of intensity and a certain level of pace. But there's nothing better that's going to teach him when they learn on their own and they learn through competition and it's just part of the process. There's no way to, I don't think there's any way to kind of short, there's no shortcuts associated with it. And even when I look back and reflect upon when Cody was little, you know, granted he was losing to some really good kids, but there's a lot of good kids that he lost to particularly at this event. Um, you know, he wasn't majoring anybody at this event. I mean, you know, there was, you, you got kids that are coming through this process and they're all tough. They all got that pace. And you know, when the whistle blows, it's on. And I think one of the things that's nice about taking your kid and getting a good balance of national level competition versus your local level competition. And, um, and in the South, you know, I think that we don't have the depth that they have up North. So our local competition is a little bit softer, 
but um, they can get real complacent and, you know, they did the right mental model. And so I think this is a good, you know, it's, it's really important to have the kids that I've seen, um, particularly from the South, because that's where I spent most of my time. It's good. It's important to have a good balance and let them get a taste of that. You know, they can stay home locally and develop on technical things and, 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 and they can grow in that way. But then there's a competitive edge that um, only a fighter gets with fights. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, but you are you are a Michigander, right? I am. I am Monroe, Michigan. Do you get to pop home for this event since it's so close to Monroe Dundee area? Do you get the? You, could you went to Dundee, right? Yeah. You, Dundee High School. Yeah. Real so high. Do you get the? Do you get to pop home? Do you get to see family that's back there or not? I do. Yeah. Every, every year we go, we fly in Detroit. We always come down hang out with them for like a day. And then uh, usually all of our family or extended family that we don't see very often, they, they come over there into, into Toledo and, um, you know, we get to see them. So it's really nice for us. You know, it being a weird year, will you still get to see family? Cause you know, there's, there's people you get together, maybe you, you don't want to get a family yeah. member sick or, you know what I mean? There's all these different things, Shane, right? We don't know, but are yeah. you still get to see the family this year. Do you think? We're going to stay away from granny. But we're going to see uh, – We're gonna. See, my cousin's going to come down and his family's going to come down. So we will be able to enjoy that. All right. When we talk minions, uh, you got any any particular people that you're looking at really making a breakthrough? If there's, you know, two, three, four guys who are going to be on the team or potentially be on the team, who do you really see making a breakthrough for you guys or really getting good experience? Whether, whether they go four and three, right? Who do you think is going to get the most out of this tournament for the Minions in Georgia and Tennessee? You know, this the class that we have is um, – they're still young. So our top-end kids as a whole are around seventh grade. Now, they're hammers in, in their world, but they're – you know, they're, we're going to be a little bit under class. We get to the older side. When we get to the heavier weights, we've got some good eighth graders. You know, but I'm looking – we've got about six or seven hammers – um, that have been doing this for a long time, but they're getting out of the baby weights now and they're starting to get in these middle weights and they're going to get really tested. I think, um, I'm really looking forward to, uh, you know, probably when you start at about 75 to about a hundred, that's kind of the sweet spot of the kids that have been doing this since they were five or six years old. And they've been up there and they've been up there multiple times. Um, nevertheless, while leaders of the team, you know, they're still going to be a little bit, uh, they're still younger. And um, it's nice to see how they respond to that. They've got expectations. A lot of them, I mean, we have, I think we have uh, 17 kids, 12 are from Tennessee and Georgia. We've got a couple fillers. Actually, I think all the fillers, with exception of one, are all from New Jersey because my son, I've got some relationships now in New Jersey. So we've been training with some New Jersey kids to fill in the holes. And, um, you know, out of those 17 kids, I don't think one of the kids are, uh, I don't, I mean, out of the 12 kids that are coming from Tennessee and Georgia that, that I've known for years, I don't think any of them have less than a couple state titles. And I think maybe with the one exception, they've all Tulsa and Super 32 All-Americans. We've got one Super 30, one Super 32 returning champ. All right. Wow. You guys are going to – I'm excited, man. I'm excited to see where you're going to end up. It's 32 teams this year, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then, like I mentioned, you know, you got Pinnacle coming down from Minnesota. You got all the all the different New Jersey teams, um, which they won last year. I forget which Jersey team won last year. Do you remember? Dynasty. Dynasty. Dynasty's got they. Uh, yeah, they are a really good. Like spot. Two California teams, California Gold. I want to. I can't think of the other one off the top of my head, but I mean, I was I called a couple of those matches. M two, obviously, you know, it, it's crazy that David yeah. Taylor takes time out of his like training schedule. To go and coach kids, you know, he's probably getting, you know, training in because the guy's a professional. But it's just kind of amazing to see the, the, the elite competition, the elite teams that come in. And, and some of them don't fare so well. That's the thing that is, like, really mind-blowing to me, man. I'm like, holy smokes. Um, all right. You are, you know, like I said, your kid's one of the top prep kids in the country. You know, what do you want to – what would you want parents to get out of this, right? You're a dad. Your kid's pretty successful. <laughs> He just won at the who's number one uh, flow wrestling thing in Austin, Texas, just a sophomore, you know, you guys have, you've crawled through the mud. You've done these events, right? What do you want parents to get out of this? Like, what do you want the 17 kids parents to get out of this event? You know, not every parent can get in the tournament and watch. What do you want kids, parents, what do you think they should take and what could, should their kids take from the national middle school duels? You know, I, I think they should enjoy it. I had a lot of people, 
in the wrestling community mentor me when I was going through the process. And, um, you know, they always used to tell me, you know, it doesn't matter at this age group. It always mattered. Like every weekend always matters. It's been mattering since, since they were five. It's hard to ever put that down. But now that Cody's getting older and, you know, I've kind of been through that cycle, I, I definitely understand what they were talking about. So, you know, I think it's sometimes you're going to have these memories for the rest of your life. And, um, you know, don't, 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 don't ruin any of them and sit back and, and really the best memories are not their wins. It's their losses. It's when they do things that are dumb. We still tease Cody all the time. We actually just had, we, I told them I was going to have a zoom call with you tonight and everybody was teasing Cody in our room about cautions. You know, I mean, still it's been like four years since that happened or three years since that happened. So I think it's important to watch that. And it's, it's important to watch little Johnny try. He's going to get tested all the adversity and all the things that you put your kids in this, in this sport from a character perspective, they come out in this, in this competition. And I think it's just kind of sit back and encourage them and, um, <clears throat> you know, and be, and, and be the parent you want to be, but no matter what happens, definitely sit back, especially in the good in the bad times, um, find a moment and find a way to enjoy it. Okay. So uh, I have been to your house there. I've stayed there. We had the, uh, I forget, was it super fly duels? What was that event Clifton? Yeah, like, what was that? Flight time. Flight time duel. Yeah. That's right. And we stayed. I stayed up in uh, – you're in your cabin, right? I am, yeah. That is a sick facility. Hopefully, I might cut this out and then have you maybe do a tour of it if you want to real quick. And I can, I can put that out there if you want to show people what – that facility you're in. Are you in the upstairs or downstairs? I'm downstairs. Okay. Yeah. Are you in that one corner where, like, the, the table I, is in the kitchen at? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. That facility's sick. But – um. So that the where you are is boom, you, it's Boom Ranch, right? That's what the name of your club. Oh, is. Tell yeah. me a little bit about Boom Ranch, Shane. So my brother and I grew up together. We always played softball together. We've kind of been best friends since uh, since we were little. And when we played softball together for several years, we were shortstop second. Every time we make a we every time we would make a uh, a double play and stuff, we would always yell boom. So the kids. Um, we never lived in the country and we moved to Tennessee. We said, Hey, let's just do what the Romans do. So we went out and got some land, started to become a country man. And uh, we found our inner redneck in us and we love it. And so uh, every, the kids thought it would be funny to call this place boom ranch. So everything sort of stuck and we've been calling it boom ranch for several years, started off as a joke, but it's kind of funny now. But uh, yeah, we have in our backyard, we got a house barn and um, it was sort of a compromise. I made my wife, I wanted the wrestling mat. She wanted to have a kitchen and a bathroom near the pool so that the kids don't go in the house all the time. And uh, one thing led to another. And I thought, hey, if I'm going to have kids come over here and in particular have kids travel um, to come train over here, you know, I got to have a place for them. So we went upstairs and we put some bunk beds upstairs. And then each year we, you know, we sort of added to it. And we knew the kids were going to make a mess. So we had to give them you know, so we put a little small kitchen net in there and we have um, washer and dryer. And now we work out in there as well and lift and lifting equipment and such. So it's kind of become like a little small training center. And it's nice because my kids are older now. And, uh, you know, this is the place to be. And, you know, the more I, they don't want to be, you know, Cody doesn't want to hang out with me anymore. Um, like most, like most teenagers. So, you know, at least they're nearby and I can, you know, and this is kind of the place to be and they got a little bit of uh, freedom and, you know, and they're always reminded because there's a wrestling mat right there. <laughs> they're always reminded to wrestle, kind of stay focused on that. Um, but it's been really fun. And I, and I have a little nephew, he's just turned 12. He's on this team um, as well. This is his third year. And, and I want, you to know, this was the first tournament in his entire life. I took him to, he still laughs at that, but, um, you know, now he's getting to kind of come through the ropes and he's got his little clan of little dudes that are running around and we all train at the Boom Ranch now. So it's kind of nice. This COVID, as much as it's messed up anything, I will admit from a family perspective, it's, it, you know, it's, it's forced the families to stay together for, for a variety of reasons. I think mom and dad always prefer that, but kids always want to run. So we've got, we're, we're making the best of it and, um, and we're enjoying ourselves. Uh, but I'll be, I'll be the first one to tell you, I can't wait to get back to normal. What is your nephew's name? Uh, his name is Hudson. Hudson Chittum? Hudson Chittum, yes, sir. And this is your brother. Your brother's from Dundee as well, and he he's down in Tennessee. Yep, yep. and we're married to sisters, and they're both no from way. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, is Hudson – okay, so hold on, hold on, hold on. 
So does Hudson have his mom's freak genetics? And Cody's got his mom freak genetics, or is it the other way around? That's what I tell Cody all the time. Cody, Cody's mom is like really, really tough and mean, you know, and so that's kind of where Cody gets all that because I'm I'm always a nice guy. But uh, you know, and then and then uh Hudson's mom, she was a collegiate uh D one swimmer. So okay. you know, she obviously pretty, you know, pretty athletic and such. So Kyle and I are just like riding their coattails. <laughs> hey, I got the same thing going on. My wife, uh, her and her sister, both D1, uh, you know, full ride athletes. My sister-in-law played division one basketball. And my wife was a volleyball player at Kent State. So my kids luckily got their athletic games from their mom. So I'm, I'm totally cool with it. I'm all right. With that. I'll, I'll take it. I, I was like a terrible wrestler. So we're, 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 we're just happy that we're able to travel and watch them. How is the pool? You have like an Olympic sized pool directly next to the building. Yeah. Yeah. That's a crazy it's literally story. Olympic sized pool. I'm not making this up. Am I? No, you're not. I have an Olympic lane. Yeah. I have a huge pool. And originally um, the only way I was going to get the barn and have kind of my quad, you know, my pseudo man cave with wrestling in there was if she could have this really big pool. And I knew if she had the pool, then I'd, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd have a bunch of maintenance associated with it. I mean, she, we were, my daughter was a swimmer and her, my nieces are swimmers. And uh, my wife was a big time swimmer. So we made Olympic size. And when the guy came out here, he said, what are you doing? He shrunk it a little bit. And he said, most people that go down this route, they just have a swim lane. And I went, oh my gosh, how smart is that? So I have a swim lane that's Olympic size, only like six feet wide but Olympic size and length and the rest of the pool, you know, it's pretty good size, but you know, the rest of the pool is, is attached to it. So. So um, crazy. I couldn't believe I was like, this is nuts. Well, my, I are not like pool designers. Cause we'd be broke. <laughs> okay. How do you, what do you do when you meet someone in the middle of your driveway? What do you do when you meet someone in the middle of your driveway? I got to get, my feeling is people are just pulling off into your yard and there's probably ruts everywhere. You have a – your driveway's over a quarter of a mile long. That's true. I can't believe you remember that. That's been like six years. It's yeah. been a while, right? Yeah, at least at least five. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you do? A mile long. Well, I mean, the first thing you do is you don't make it straight. My builder, I kept yeah, telling him – Yeah, it's windy too. That's right. I kept telling him, I said, hey, I want this thing nice and straight. And he said, no, because you're never going to get it straight. And so he made it windy so that he couldn't screw, screw it up. And – uh you know, I'm a big bass fisherman, and and and, uh, and we fish a lot, so I'm always trailing up there. It's really difficult. I didn't realize after we're building it that, you know, it would be really difficult trailing it. But we definitely have a lot of skid marks in the yard, and uh, the yard has just kind of become kind of an extra driveway if necessary, especially if you're coming out the kit and somebody's coming in. That's what I'm that's, saying. That's like, a- someone's got to pull off. That's right. Oh, yeah, you're screwed. You're, you're not, not backing back. down your driveway. <laughs> Yeah, you're definitely not going backwards on a windy road. No, it's just not happening. It's a beautiful property. How many acres do you guys have there? I forget. Uh, we have 50. Oh, it's yeah. so awesome. The back of it rolls uh-huh. down into like a hill, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of tucked away in a nice little area. I love yeah, it. Cool. I can't wait to get back down there now. You need to. Yeah, I'm going to go check the Boom Ranch out. Um, All right, next thing for the – so so Hudson Chittam will be in – Perrysburg at the National Middle School Duels. Where's Cody Chittum going to be? Uh, Cody is um, – this weekend we're hosting the Minions. Actually, that team that won 2017 is – they're all, you know, they're all in high school now, and um, we're hosting an event. It's, it's, a, it's called the Elite Eight in Atlanta. There's eight, there's eight teams. So the Minion Legends, as we call them, it's all the old ducks. They are uh, – they'll be wrestling this weekend. And then next week I sign them up for uh, Junior Nationals out in, uh, out in Nebraska. So he's going to go out there. And, so. The Elite Eight one, um, is that the – is Cliff running that one? Yeah, that's what Cliff's putting together, yep. Okay. Yeah, that, that looks like an unbelievable event. There's going to be some really good guys go owing something. Oh, yeah. It's a rank fest. Oh. And there's only 18, so it's going to be a rank fest. Like there's going to be dudes that are going to be owing five or owing four because they're probably going to get – they're going to – I mean, they might have wrestled everybody, huh? I don't know. I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to – the way they set it up, I think there's like three in pool play, one crossover play, and then you're bracketed. So, minimum, you're going to wrestle six, seven teams 
um, you could wrestle one team, I guess, twice, depending on how you finish in the bracket. We're going to yeah, have top 20 nationally ranked guys go 0 and 7. Very, very. I mean, I, yeah, I've seen some of the rankings and seen some of the guys in the pools, and I'm thinking, this guy's. I get him on my team. He's like ranked 15th in the country, and I'm doing backflips. Then I'm going, oh my gosh, the 10 guys here, the seven guys here, the two and the one guys here. So it's going to be fun. Awesome, man. I'm super excited. I'm, I'm glad that you guys are coming back to national middle school duels as of right now. I mean, we, we know anything can change in a week or two, right? Yeah. It's wild, right? right? It's wild. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, do you, stick around real quick. I'm going to cut this and talk to you afterwards. I appreciate the time. You got anything else for me? Shane? No, I just want to say thanks for everything you do. You know, I get on your YouTube channel about a year ago. I'm one of those dads that, ha that I need that stuff to, uh, to help myself so I can help my kids. And, um, you know, I, I've been, uh, I'm glad since I met you and I've, I've watched everything you guys put out there. And I really appreciate it. I think there's a lot of people out there that use that. And I know it's very valuable to me and my, and my guys. All right, Shane. Thanks for the time. Stick around. I'll talk to you afterwards. All right. Thank you.